30 is I launch the airplane and then I can feel the wind change via how the airplane is responding. That That's telling me more information than what I'm feeling. Joe, can you tell us about when you fly and you don't know exactly on which direction is Obviously, it's not happening most of the time, but when you don't know, and you told me something about you see where the airplane is drifting. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about it a little bit? Yeah. Uh, so again, and how do you do it? Yeah. You put it on a neutral and see what it does. If, I, it's, if I have zero clue in F3K, you go around with the airplane you launch, you point it in the wind, and you know, just sit there for a few seconds. And then you can feel whether the airplane's getting pulled left or pulled right. And of course, if the wind's calming down, the airplane goes forward. It's like, yeah, I know where I'm going, I'm going forward. But yeah, I'll launch and I'll feel the drift for five, five seconds or so on, and then make the evaluation and I run with the drift. Always yeah. run with the drift. Right, so the, you launch and the airplane's getting pulled to the left, I'll turn left and go. So the airplane's telling me what is that third vector. So it's like a compass. It wants to well, merge with the with the. With well, you get pulled towards the air. So if, if you're launching, let's say, you know, you're straight up wind. And I'm launching at you, and okay, now I've got to fly like this to keep going at you, which means the air's over there. Mm -hmm. So the, the tail's getting pulled. But that depends if your plane is. 100% uh, neutral to fly without putting in inputs. Well, you're always putting inputs. So how do you know that it wasn't your input? I can tell that the air, in order to fly that direction, I have to point it to the right to fly straight. In other words, the ground track. I know you're the average wind straight at you. And I launch, and if I point the fuselage at you, it's doing this. Mm -hmm. and so, so you measure it, you see the difference. Yeah, I can see the airplane is drifting over. So, yeah, understanding that, you know, it's situational awareness in the field is really important. And the hardest part in F3K is you do this little spinning thing, you throw the airplane, and, oh, well, where, where am I? <laughs> <laughs> So uh, the F3K does uh, put a slight complication factor in there on the throw. But that, that what I'm feeling is ground wind signs and you know, flags, etc. So obvious thing, I see somebody going up, I'll put that at a very high priority. Airplane telling me something, ground wind signs. Okay, if I don't have any of those, then I'm gonna play tree lines terrain type, uh, you know, or actually ground obstruction. But when I'm, when I'm quite low, I'm probably going to increase the priority of that ground obstruction. So, and then what you really want to do is to have multiple of these uh, to add up to increase your validity of your call. When I'm calling for somebody at a big contest, uh, especially if I'm making a pre round call, I'll tell him both my call and my confidence level on the call. It's like sometimes I know it's there, and sometimes it's like I think it's there. <laughs> so, and yeah, we, we've got a code all set up for making the call. It's like, you know, they're, they're hearing you know, the competitors, at, especially F3J, you know, they're, they're hearing me call out this code. And uh, it's like it doesn't make any sense to me, but it makes sense to my teammates. First world champs for F3, F3K. Sweden. Sweden, yeah. <clears throat> well, we had, uh, well, especially since uh, one of my teammates, Kevy, let's just say he's not a technical type. So the, the code I used to work with with the uh, team for F3J wouldn't work with him. So. We ended up making, okay, one direction we called the winery because there was silos over there which one could construe as being for a winery. But you know, we'd say, okay, thermal's over the winery. And, and 
there's no winery here in the fields, so nobody can understand what we're talking about. And, uh, you know, we had code for all these different locations, and then uh, so we can sit there and talk to each other. And the cute part was uh, the timers that were on the field, you know, the official timers. A few of them figured out our code at the end of the, end of the contest. It's easier when nobody speaks Hebrew. Yes, yes. Uh, that's one challenge with uh, us uh, only English speakers. Yeah. But uh, we started using, uh, it, it, it's like uh, portable toilets in New Zealand. The Kiwis call them a bog. So and the portable toilets on the field is that, that type of ended up being, that's the bog. And nobody else in the field understands what a bog is. <laughs> now we understand. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, 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 this is like doing something, so. Yeah, well, this. Uh, yeah, we'll take a break for now.